Hello, and welcome to episode 418 of the official EstablishTheRun.com podcast. My name is Adam Levitan, joined by two of our top strategists here at ETR, Mike Leone and Jack Miller. Leone, how's it going? It's going pretty well. Jack, good afternoon. Good afternoon. On today's show, we're going to talk about how to win your league, how to win your draft if you have a late first round pick, pick 9, 10, 11, or 12. If you want the full breakdown on this and continuous updates that come throughout the next few weeks, be sure you have our draft kit. Also, note that this podcast is brought to you by our friends at Underdog Fantasy. Best Ball Mania continues to go on. $25 buy-in, $2 million to first, $1 million to second. Absolutely outrageous. Best way to get ready for your home league is to practice in a lot of these drafts and hopefully win some money along the way as well. All right, picks nine through 12. I mean, a lot of options here. I mean, you can go a zillion different ways of picks nine through 12 because you can start building some Kelsey teams. You can go RB, RB. You can also start wide receiver, wide receiver. I don't think it's crazy to start um, Steph Diggs, CeeDee Lamb, or Devontae Adams, Mike Evans, or something like that. I also don't think it's crazy to start Travis Kelsey, DeAndre Swift. There's a zillion different things that you can do from the back end of the first round. Are you disappointed though, Leone, if you get one of these back end first round picks? And how do you think about drafting from here? Uh, I mean, maybe a little disappointed. I think the prize is always to get CMC around those top four picks, which if you listen to our picks one through four episode, we outline why. But uh, once you get past that, I think it's okay to be at the back end. You get some interesting builds, especially if you have a good read on what your league is going to do. I think you, know, you have, as you said, the options to go RBRB, wide receiver, wide receiver. You can take elite tight end and Kelsey. So there's a few different ways you can go about it, depending on what you think will be available at the turns at three, four and five, six. Yeah, I mean, there's sometimes that Dalvin slips to pick nine and like you could get, start with like Dalvin Saquon in a lot of leagues. I know Leone is throwing up in his mouth right now thinking about a running back, running back start, but I don't think that's crazy. Jack, how do you think about when you get a pick nine, 10, 11 or 12 this year? Yeah, I don't think it's ideal, but you you just got to roll with the punches, I guess. I, I will say with these picks, I would like to get at least one running back. I think we'll get into this in a minute, but I think in rounds three through like five or six, we're kind of going to want to target receivers pretty heavily. And so I think these guys, like I think Dalvin will slip to picks nine through 12 in a lot of leagues because of his, his injury history. And then there's a whole tier of Swift, Mixon, Najee Harris, his workload is going to be just unbelievable. Um, Derek Henry, even in like standard leagues, maybe. And then you could even reach for someone like Saquon, Aaron Jones. I don't really think that's the worst thing in the world. So I like to leave the first two rounds with one of those guys if I can. Uh, before Leone throws up his lunch, we should at least give him a chance to shill for the wide receiver, wide receiver start. Leone, do you think that something such as Diggs Lamb or Diggs Mike Evans or Devontae Adams Lamb or something like that? How do you think about wide receiver, wide receiver starts? Yeah, I think... Again, you probably want a full PPR league where you're starting three wide receivers. So you can absolutely crush people, not just at wide receiver one, two, but wide receiver three and in your flex spot. You know, that's how you win leagues. And those RB spots aren't as important as you think. So I think Adams digs, CD Lamb is in that mix as well. But ideally for me, I'd want Kelsey with one of the wide receivers if I'm going, you know, a zero RB build. And it's possible to three, four turn too. If you know your league and Travis Etienne slips and falls, like mm-hmm. that's a really good kind of pseudo hero running back that you could build around at the three, four turn, or you could continue to pound wide receiver. But I think you have a little bit more option, uh, at optionality if you take the elite tight end, shore up that position. There's a lot of breakout wide receivers that were ahead of market on, you know, starting from rounds three all the way through, you know, round nine. So uh, I I do prefer, honestly, getting one non-wide receiver here, whether it's the elite tight end or a running back. Yeah, I certainly like starting Kelsey running back. I think that can make a lot of sense. Certainly have done a bunch of Kelsey Swift starts um, in my drafts this year. As we get to rounds three and four, we've already made two picks here. I don't think, well, in sharp leagues, certainly Travis Etienne is not getting back to us, right? But in home leagues, I could see Travis Etienne getting back to us. I could also see maybe James Conner getting back to us. I could probably see Brees Hall getting back to us. Jack, what do you think about rounds three and four with some of these running backs? Yeah, I think Etienne and Conner uh, would be the two running backs where I would consider them over other positions if those two slip. I think Kyle Pitts maybe could get down here in, a, in maybe home leagues. But for the most part, I would want to focus on receivers. You've got Jalen Waddle, you've got DJ Moore, Corlin Sutton. Just there are so many options with like top five, top 10 receiver upside that I would want to probably double tap receiver at the three, four turn most of the time. Yeah, it's tough to say who will get back here, but there's certainly a lot of them. I wrote down T. Higgins, Keenan Allen, A.J. Brown, Sutton, Pittman, 
big Mike Williams, Waddle, DJ Moore. I mean, if I can get two of those guys, I think that's pretty strong. And that goes back to what I was saying, Leonie, about running back, running back. Like if I start running back, running back from the back end of the first round, well, I can just go wide receiver, wide receiver with two really good ones in three and four. What do you think about that? And how are you thinking about three, four turn from the back? Yeah, I think that's viable because you can really continue to hit wide receivers. I'm on all the same wide receivers as Jack. I think it's perfect for the 3-4 turn. I think you could double tap wide receiver again at the 5-6 turn. So I'm okay with running back, running back. I do think it's a good thing in these leagues to have more wide receivers than you think you need to start because in a managed league setting, come like week eight or so, you just want it to be so obvious who you're sliding in those spots. So There's going to be bye weeks plus and injuries. Uh, you're going to win your league if you have four wide receivers that are shoe-ins to start each week, even if that means you drafted more than you needed in the first eight rounds. But you can do it with RBRB. It's not, not my preferred strat. Uh, in terms of tight end, you're not getting Mark Andrews here a lot because um, he just doesn't go in the range and we don't think it's right to take him in the range even in the second round. Obviously, not in the second round or the first round for Mark Andrews. He doesn't get back to the third round. You maybe can get your hands on Pitts, although he's going to go earlier, I think, a lot. Then we start getting back into the Waller, Kittle stuff. Is tight end maybe a priority here, Leone, where um, in rounds three and four, I like all these wide receivers, but man, we want to be elite at tight end, right? Yeah, this is where in a sharper league and where the wide receiver ADPs get pushed up, I'm probably sticking with wide receiver because I don't want to get caught being shallow there. If I'm in a more casual league where I think a lot of the wide receiver breakouts will slip, then I'm fine taking Waller maybe a little bit ahead of you know where I have him ranked. You know, maybe I take Waller instead of Deontay Johnson to sh- you know just to lock in that advantage at tight end, understanding I can get maybe Amon Ross St. Brown, Gabriel Davis at the five six turn. Um, yeah. Those guys are going to go earlier in sharper leagues, but in more casual leagues where more running backs get flooded up and more veteran wide receivers get flooded up, you can get those breakout guys there. You can maybe even get Juju at the five, six turn. So you really have to have a good grasp on what your league's going to do because Waller to me is like this pivot point where he's not the best pick in a vacuum, but he might be the best pick if you look at your draft uh, from a you know a 10,000 foot view. I think that part of the problem with for me with drafting from this spot from the back end of the first round is that I'm just like praying for guys to get back to me. Now, forget about round one and two. I'm talking about like rounds three and four, rounds five and six. I'm just sitting there praying that one of Waller or Kittle gets back to me. I'm sitting there praying uh, that someone like Juju or Monra gets to me. And like, I'm not sure that any of those guys even will. And so, you know, I think it's it's probably my least favorite spot uh, to draft at. But as we move to the five rounds five and six turn here, Jack, I think you can start considering quarterback. You know, you might be able to get your hands on Lamar or Mahomes, Herbert, Kyler. And like the problem is, again, you don't know who's going to get back to you. Is Jalen Hurts going to get back to you? Or are you going to get stuck with someone in the Dak, Russ, Brady, Burrow type of range? So what do you think about the five, six turn, Jack? Yeah, I think quarterback uh, is definitely, this is where it starts to get viable. Lamar, Herbert, Mahomes could get there. I think maybe in more casual leagues, there is a tendency to push quarterbacks up, in which case those guys might not be available. And then in that case, I'd kind of pivot the Jalen Hurts in round six, if possible. Um, But I think most of the time I'd either go receiver, receiver at this turn, because like like we talked about, there's just so many breakout options this year, even extending into the fifth and sixth round. And then I think I'd also uh, consider quarterback here. So either receiver, receiver, double tap receiver again, or QB receiver in some order at the five, six turn. Depending on how your draft went so far, you could certainly be thin at running back from this spot. As we get to round seven or eight, you know, guys like Tony Pollard, uh, I think AJ Dillon will likely be gone, but Miles Sanders, Ramondre Stevenson, Chase Edmonds. I don't want to like force running back here, Leone, but I think depending on your build, if he gets to round seven or eight and you're thin at running back, this is where I would start to hit it. What do you think about that in round seven or eight? Yeah, I think you know there are some options there. I mean, you hit the main ones. If you can get Pollard Dillon, they're sort of the grab where they have some standalone value and they have the absolutely massive ceilings beyond that. It's weird after them, there's a decent teardrop off or I wouldn't mind honestly continuing to stockpile some wide receiver breakout talent, like maybe gambling on a Traylon Burks or Drake London uh-huh. and then hitting running back the next round, just because I don't think the quality of running back is going to change. And then you can basically hit running back each turn, like the rest of the way in, like all the way in, you can hit Kenneth Walker, you know, breakout guy like that. You can hit Michael Carter, who's, you know, a miniature version of that standalone value plus upside. Uh, Kenny Gainwell, we like a lot. Isaiah Spiller, 
is a pure zero in standalone value, but has huge contingent value and mix all of these running back archetypes together so that you can you know, shore up your running back to with someone who's okay and Iheem Hines type from day one. And then come the second half of the season, maybe you're rolling out Isaiah Spiller and an offense like the Chargers if Eckler goes down, or maybe Kenneth Walker has just taken the job fully away from Rashad Penny because we know he's an elite rushing prospect. I think that's a great point about different types of running backs. Think about how they play and when they're likeliest to be at their peak, and you can take a mix of those guys. I think that makes a lot of sense. All right, we've said it all about drafting with picks 9, 10, 11, or 12. Be sure you subscribe to the Draft Kit to see Jack's article about this topic, which is continuously updating as we get more information on ADP and player news. Four. Jack for Leone, producer Luke. I am Adam. Good luck, everybody. 